Hello and welcome everybody. I'm your host, NFO Guides, and I'm here to show you what little I know. Thank you everybody for jumping out and watching uh, this video of mine. Uh, it's been a while since I've done anything about Splinterlands. I've been refraining on doing uh, a video specifically on why I left Splinterlands. I didn't want to cause waves or anything like that. Uh, so in this video, I am going to go over kind of the eight key reasons that finally made myself decide it was time for me to take my assets out of the game for other purposes. So we're going to kind of cover that here. And so, you know, I'm open for feedback, all feedback, good feedback, even bad feedback. Just I ask you to please keep any comments to politically correct. Don't just bash people, myself or anything with foul language. But if you have good feedback, I would more than appreciate hearing it. Uh, even though I have left Splinterlands and I don't talk in the Discord chats anymore or anything like that, I am still here. I still am watching the community. I am still watching not every town hall, but you know, I've been catching town halls here and there. I've been watching After Sound and Dwayne's videos. I just I've gone silent because I no longer currently hold any assets in the game. Well, knock on wood. All right, if if this type of uh, video content is something you guys like, please like and subscribe down below. I know it's kind of a downer of a video for me asking for likes and subscribes, but hey, I'm a cool guy and we're just here to have fun. Um, and so let's get into this. At, well, after you like and subscribe. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, those of you that know me and who knew me in Splinterlands knew me by probably the na other name of mine, which was Axler Twinblade. That's usually my gaming name. NFO Guides is my streaming name and a set of tools I make for Splinterlands. Uh, other way is Baron's Toolbox right there. Uh, this one, Baron's Toolbox. And even though I have left the game, my Baron stool box is still there. Um, I don't advertise it. I don't push it. I have no idea if anyone's using it, but I do still maintain that for 100% free. Well, maintain. I keep the lights on. I don't do any more updates. Okay. Let us uh, discuss some of the key reasons I left Splinterlands. Now, in this, I'm going to try to make sure everybody understands these are the reasons I left. I'm not trying to throw the development team under the bus, even though some of my key points are focused around some of the development team. Um, uh, team, not individual, but the, the whole team. So, What's the first key point? The number one thing that, oh, let me get that off the screen. The number one reason that triggered me to literally un start unstaking all of my SPS, I had 230 or 240,000 SPS. The number one reason was they were at the end of 23, they were pushing hard to get land phase one, phase 1 1.5 out. Sounded like they were doing good. They, they got it right before the end of the year. We got land phase 1.5. And things were looking up. A little backstory on me. I joined Splinterlands in 2021 for the sole purpose of the land aspect of the game. So at the end of 23, I finally was seeing movement. I was getting excited. I had 24 plots of land. I had all my best cards 
staked on those plots of land. I had all the DEC needed for 50, uh, what was it? 50,000 DEC on each plot of land. Uh, and all I was making was grain. This will come into play later, but all I was really making was grain. And well, I'll just cover it now. So what happened is they, they went over their, their Christmas vacation, which was great. Everybody deserves vacations and time off. Then Splinterlands had their big uh, meeting with their group and were plotting and planning the layout for 2024 and what they were going to be working on. And so the very first town hall comes out and they're talking about what they're going to be working on. And land 2.0 was not mentioned. Really. It's been put on a back burner or that's not their main focus. The new player experience is their main focus. Okay, this was devastating for myself because Here's what I saw as a self-taught programmer, and I, my day job is programming websites all day long. That's why I made Baron's Toolbox. Hearing that land was not on the roadmap for 2024 completely pulled the rug from out from under me. I joined Splinterlands for the land game. I was just getting pieces and parts of it at the end of 23. Things were looking up, and the first town hall, the very first town hall in 2024, land is on pause. In depth, well, they didn't say indefinitely. As a programmer, here's what I heard it's on pause. We're focusing on the new player experience to make the game more fun. Okay, my translation in my head. I've been doing Baron's Toolbox for free to enhance aspects of the game, such as uh, the land, uh, oh, the land display, and all this kind of stuff. Let me just pull it up because it'll be easier. So, land in their eyes. Let's look at KG. Oh, it's. KGM Jam. Let's look up him because he has land. Okay. I made this whole land display myself because the game needed it. I needed it. It's very useful to so many people. It was a game experience need. I did this that kind of stuff myself because that's how important the game experience was to me. And in 2020, up until 2024, they ignored the game experience, but they were finally working on, they were working on land. Well, now, three years into it, they stop working on land and they start working on game experience which is stuff that I was building out for free as best I could for the past two and a half years. Okay, water under the ridge. If land 2.0 is on hold, well, here's what we know. It's going to take a lot of programming to get land 2.0 out the door. That's a big white paper he, they released. Okay. Well, I think it was the second town hall of the year where they kind of said it would be worked on towards the end of 2024. That just means they're going to start coding it towards the end of 2024, which means I'm not trying to throw the team under the bus, but it seems like their coding team is slow. So if they start programming, let's say at I'll be fair. In my head, I heard January of 25 is when they were going to start programming it. So that in my head said it wouldn't be available to us, the public, to play 
until January of 26. That is what my head translated that to. I wish I was wrong, but here we are in August, towards the end of August, almost September. And from my uh, perspective, Land 2.0 is not really being worked on. Um, I think they're still working on trying to get out some pieces and parts of Land uh, 1.6 or something like that. Now, I had all my best cards on 24 plots of land, 240,000 SPS staked, and I had 50,000 DEC for each plot of land staked, and I was only making grain and research. Okay. Land 2.0 just got delayed until 2026 in my eyes. So that meant the grain was going to be, here it is, here's the reason, grain was going to be overproduced in the game for two years. Two years worth of grain production meant grain was beyond worthless. Overprinting grain for two years is the same thing that they had already shown and did with overprinting vouchers by enabling node licenses to get paid vouchers before there was any use for said vouchers. So vouchers were, were and probably still are getting overprinted. It's the same problem they had with the Soulbound reward cards. They released the set with no real idea of how many they were giving out and how many that would put on the market, how many could the market absorb. So they just released them and let them keep printing until they made up a plan in the future. So Soulbound reward cards being overprinted because of no real plan. Then you had vouchers overprinted, no real plan. And I saw that happening with grain. That's where 80% of my assets in the game was focused on land. And I just was told anything I'm making is worthless from my point of view. Okay, let's move on to. Point number two, because I could talk about that forever, but that is the best way I can sum up uh, what went on in my head when I heard that. And that for me, that was a devastating blow. Next one. The re they released the Rebellion set of cards. And with it, they have included this thing called Tactics. Okay, let's be blunt here. They cherry picked the best stuff from land, item and spell cards, called it tactics, and they put it on the rebellion set of cards. What? I know some of you don't see it the way I do, but yeah, tactics, that in effect was item and spells. It was a new step in the game. Um, item and spells was supposed to introduce a new step in gameplay. But here it was for free and not produced by land. So what that just meant is, okay, if they're putting the good stuff, I mean, this was the, this is the, the cream of the crop best aspect of land was we're going to be able to make item and spell cards. Well, they just, uh, how do you put it? They just completely diminished the item and spell cards uh, uh, use case, um, the excitement around them just got cut in half because they are already releasing things that are equivalent to item and spell cards. 
So Rebellion all of a sudden cherry-picked one of the best aspects from land, released it on the cards, and they released it on the cards for free, and had nothing to do with land. Huge disappointment again for me. Land was my main focus. I want to make item and spell cards. That was exciting to me. They were going to be useful. Well, now with tactics already in play, item and spell cards, when they do eventually make it onto the market, I bet you anything, tactics will have already put in play everything an item and spell card probably will do. Um, because again, I don't see item and spell cards coming out until the end of 26. If they're just getting land 2.0 out at the beginning of 26, yeah. So, Rebellion cherry picking the good stuff from land was another huge blow for me. Number three. Oh, I already talked about this. I forgot I had it separated in my list. Uh, that whole process of land not being worked on, it made the grain I was earning worthless. So I had uh, roughly, let's say, $8,000 US in different types of assets on my land. $8,000 of stuff between SPS at, I think it was a little over one and a half cents. It was like 1.6 cents at the time. Then I had all my top level gold foils, uh, gold foil, legendary, everything staked on land. Everything that they were making was no longer going to be making any profit for at least two more years. So an $8,000 investment making no profit, zero profit for the next two years. Okay, that was, okay, I had a lot of grain, but that grain would be worthless. Number four, okay. I'm sorry, Soulbound card unlocking, the method that they've done, hate it. Um, here's a simple reason. When I started playing the game in 20, uh, 21, reward cards were rewards. Instead, what they have done is they turned reward cards into cards that you can level up, you can play with, and earn a little bit, but at the end of the day, you still have to buy them. Not interested. I already owned the Chaos Legion set. Had fun collecting it. I'm not a huge whale. I didn't need reward cards that I had to repurchase for myself. Now, hold that with a little bit of grain of salt. I'm not just saying I hated it. I actually, when the game has introduced selling of Soulbound or unlocking of Soulbound, I have come in here. I have unlocked, uh, I think I had 11,000 deck. I unlocked two epics and a common or something like that. And I sold them and I made 11,000 deck. In other words, soulbound cards have no, absolutely no value other than how much I dump into it just to sell it. I made no profit. No, they weren't the best cream of the crop cards. It doesn't matter. There was no profit. So the Soulbound card unlocking, all it is, it's like a deposit. You put $10 in, you sell it, you get your $10 back. But did you make anything? No, not really. Why? Because Soulbound cards were overprinted to everybody, there was no plan when they released them of how many they were spitting out to everybody. They were spitting out the cards so fast, all the whales out there had maxed out their sets and were begging for something else. So they were rushing to come up with a way to unlock the cards. 
I'm going to, you know, I had thrown out an option, got it in front of Matt. He didn't like it. Uh, I personally think soulbound cards should always be soulbound. If you want to trade, buy, sell, trade, you have a $1 in voucher cost to temporarily unlock the card so you can do that one transaction. You can buy sell or trade it um well sorry not buy a buyer wouldn't pay the fee just the seller would pay the fee simple you would get more money burned in voucher costs by always having these cards um unlockable at any time instead of having a one-time fee of ten dollars to unlock the card once forever um so missed opportunity it was a great use case for vouchers because if you vouchers were meant to be an access token for those who stayed around and played the game and here it was okay if you stayed around and played the game you got a lot of vouchers which meant you could unlock your cards for free and now they were truly reward cards once again so their method of soul bottom card unlocking is silly sorry prove me wrong in the comments below okay i gotta move this off screen okay item number five oh ah, here we go item number five glint store the only reason they needed to make the glint store was because of the soulbound cards Let's think about this. Here, let me reduce myself here so I'm not covering up my points. Oh, gotta find the right piece here. I'm shrinking. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. The Glint store. Why was it needed? It was needed because. Everybody who is collecting the Soulbound reward cards trying to complete a set could not get the cards that they needed. Let me repeat that. The people collecting a set could not get the cards that they needed because, well, it was a random drop. Let me tell you about the solution. If you switch the unlocking to be, uh, you can unlock a card at any time for $1 worth of vouchers, all of the cards that people were trying to get would be on the rental market. They would be on the buy market. People would be selling them. So the creation of the Glint store was only needed because they would not allow the unlocking of cards. If they allowed the cards to be unlocked reasonably and sooner, they would have been on the market and people would have been able to finish their collections the way they already intended to for this game to work. The game has a market and it has a rental market. It did not need a glint store. It needed them to unlock the temporary or unlock soulbound cards. I realized they were overprinted. That's why there needed to be some sort of fee to temporarily unlock it. Once you bought it from the market, you would have it in your account and it would be locked again until you paid a fee to transfer it, move it, whatever. There would be an infinite burn on vouchers if they had done it this way and the glint store not needed the only reason you guys want it is so you can complete your set of cards so the glint store okay huge waste of programming and graphic artist time their game already had the solution built the market and the rental market would have achieved what the Glint store was trying to give us. 
all they had to do was let us unlock soulbound cards. Instead, they wasted a ton of time, which pushed land out of scope of 2024. Okay. This one is me being as harsh as I can <clears throat> on the team. And this is no one person. This has to do with their end of the year meetings. Since 2021, each year, it seems like when they go away for their hiatus, their vacation, have their group meetings, and they come back, they completely shift what direction they are heading. They go from, oh, we're going to be focused on this. And all of a sudden, they switch their focus. So uh, let's, let's call attention to the fact that before land, I believe it was a Kickstarter. In a Kickstarter, they sold boss fights. There's people still waiting for their boss fights to take effect, which was supposed to be an element that would be introduced with land. But now land got pushed out of 2024 and in my eyes won't even happen until 26 and then they're working on item and spell cards these boss fights have just disappeared but i think the biggest problem is the team is not following through with whatever they decide they're doing they get it so far they go on their end of the year vacation, they come back and they walk away from whatever they were focused on and they focus on something else. To me, it's like they're chasing squirrels. It's like something new runs by and they go, oh yeah, that's cool. And then they walk away from what they were doing to program something new, <clears throat> like a glint store. Okay. My seventh key reason of why I left Splinterlands. For the dollar amount I had in Splinterlands versus if I had taken that dollar amount out of Splinterlands, I had a need to purchase some other physical assets, computer gear and all this. If you guys haven't seen it, uh, let's see here. Let's see if I can pull this uh, a separate camera up so I can showcase what I'm talking about. And okay, there we go. I got a camera here that's mobile. <coughs> Now you're not going to be able to hear the sound while I'm I'm doing a I'm going to walk around and show you what I mean by physical assets, okay? So again, in Splinterlands, I had about $8,000 worth of assets, about 6,000 of that was tied up 100% in land. Again, uh my audio isn't going to work as I'm walking around, but I'm going to walk around show some things on my mobile camera here and then with that i'll come back and kind of discuss the items i showed and all that fun stuff so first let me go turn on the light all right I turned on my room lights so it's easier for you guys to see this camera. Okay, since I'm right next to the mic, I'll go ahead and talk over these few pieces right here. This whole room, everything you see here, this wall is part of my garage. This room is 24 foot by 11 foot. When I took my money out of Splinterlands, I built this whole room. I built the wall. I bought the door. I bought the carpeting. I bought the trim boards all the way around. 
not the windows and the exterior walls. I built the desks. Uh, two computers up here on the wall. Let's see if I can zoom in on them. Oh, I bought all the electrical wire for the room. Ran all the electric, all the lighting. Uh, let's see, I bought the floor air conditioning unit. I bought two, two computers. I've got mining. Uh, they're doing salad crypto mining AI workloads right now. Uh, but dollar amount, they are Ryzen 9 5950 CPU chips, 16 cores, 64 gig of memory with um, NVIDIA 3060 video card on them. Each setup costs about 800 bucks. So right there on that board that you're looking at, that was $1,600 of Splinterlands assets that were tied up in the game. Let me go on. Three D printer. I don't know if you can hear this, Pat, but I purchased a six hundred dollar three D printer, and that was part of my Splinterland asset. Uh, let's see. Down here, that NVIDIA GeForce box, part of Splinterland. Uh, let's see, what else? This PC right here, I bought it from Facebook Marketplace for about $400. Splinterland's past. So again, everything. Oh, and more stuff over here in this corner, my, my new microphone. Uh, this little mini display right here, which is currently off. I'll turn it on so you can see it. These are all gadgets. But these are all the things that was tied up in Splinterlands. This whole room, my whole man cave was sitting there in Splinterland's assets tied up, making grain, which is going to be worthless. About all I can say about that. Let's turn this camera off. Sorry for the jittery camera. So again, that hopefully gives you guys an idea of what oh and besides everything i just showed you i still have over one thousand five hundred dollars in cash in a bank that was splinterlands assets it's for additional items in this room as i need them all of that was in splinterlands tied up and wasn't going to do anything for me for the next two years. And the final reason is, yeah, they kind of bugged me. This was a personal affront to me. With Baron's Toolbox, I was making free game experience enhancements to Splinterlands for over two years. Two years. I was making Baron's Toolbox stuff free for fun to the public, not asking for a penny. And it seemed like I kept getting snub nose. Like, like anytime I bring it up with team members, they were like, yeah, 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 that's not important. The tokens are important. Yeah, yeah, that's not important. The tokens are important. Okay. So then why in 2024 did all of a sudden everything that I was trying to tell them for two and a half years, my guild management tool, my land management tool, uh, you, you name it, these things help everybody because their game doesn't offer it. I even at one point tried to offer, oh, I didn't try, I offered my code for my stuff to them 
and yeah wasn't going to happen all right so that is in a simple uh very long video nutshell of why baron's toolbox and axler twin blade left splinterlands there's too much assets tied up in the game that uh, I, I couldn't see staying there any longer. Uh, so now I have a wonderful crypto man cave. Uh, I've got all the bells and whistles I could want. Yes, I did it as cheap as I could. I did it all myself. Um, some of the stuff isn't perfect, but I don't care. It all has been oh completely forgot i also purchased a 900 dollar brand new laptop for my wife for her work uh, she's a school teacher long story short uh it's better if we buy the pc so the school doesn't give her some piece of junk so i bought her a nice 900 hundred dollar gaming pc laptop uh so that's also splinterlands assets that have been spent This was long-winded. I would like to end this on somewhat of a positive note, and that is I'm still watching the community. I'm still watching the token prices. I'm still watching and listening to what the team is doing. I hope I see um, a new light bulb go on that encourages me to come back. I enjoy Splinterlands for the game, for what it is, for what it was. I feel it just was taking too many side quests and not completing the main campaign that was laid out before us. That ultimately led to me wanting to finally pull that trigger, which I did, and leave Splinterlands as far as holding assets in the game, I have left. I still have tons of soulbound, uh, almost a full set of soulbound cards. Um, I don't find that they're worth unlocking. Uh, so I still have those in the game. I still have some unsold bound stuff in the game. And I'm watching. So thank you guys for hanging out with me. Please leave me feedback and comments below. Do you agree with me on an item? Do you disagree with me on an item? All I ask is that you first subscribe to my channel, please. <laughs> and leave your comments, but leave them in a meaningful way, even if they're bad, like, oh, Baron, you got it all wrong. You got, you were wrong. Let me know. Just be kind. I'll be kind in my responses. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. I'm out of here. Peace.